Okay, hi, so welcome to this video on nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. In this video, we're going to go through exactly what each process is and where they occur. So the first thing we're going to look at is nuclear fission. And nuclear fission is basically the splitting up of an atomic nucleus. And by an atomic nucleus, we mean the nucleus of an atom, of course. So here we are. The nuclear fission is the splitting of an atomic nucleus. And why is it important to know this, first of all? Because this is what happens in nuclear reactors. Okay, so what happens... It is, sorry, what happens in nuclear reactors. And a nuclear reactor is obviously... Uh, I'm talking about a nuclear power plant. So nuclear power plants actually use this process of nuclear fission in order to produce energy. All right, and... What actually is the nucleus breaking down? Because it's not like you can just take any nucleus and they're all going to break down by nuclear fission. Okay, you basically have isotopes which are commonly used because they provide a lot of energy and they can actually split by nuclear fission. Not all nuclei will. And those are uranium. Okay, uranium-235. And 235 is obviously uh, basically saying the mass of that atom because obviously different isotopes have different masses. Some of them are fissionable, some of them are not. And so uranium-235 and plutonium-235. plutonium, plutonium Those two nuclei are particularly useful and they're the ones that are used in nuclear reactors because they will split by nuclear fission. So let's now have a look at a diagram which shows the process and what's actually happening. And so we scroll down. Here we go. And I'm going to talk you through and label it, of course. So here, this is basically depicting a nucleus, right? And you can see down here from this key that that is uranium-235. And so it's one of our two isotopes we said was used in fission. And the red parts are protons. Right, so the red parts there are protons. And you can see from the key down here that the white or silver parts are neutrons. So what you can see is that this here is a nucleus because it consists of both protons and neutrons. But if we look above it, you can see a neutron coming in. And that's because the process of fission is initiated by a neutron being absorbed by a nucleus. Right, so a, nu a neutron sorry, is absorbed by this nucleus, which then will cause it to split apart. Right, so this nucleus will actually split apart, and I haven't drawn that in the diagram here, but there will be two smaller nuclei, right, for example, and don't worry about this drawing, like that. They are smaller than the original because basically the original nucleus has split apart and produced two smaller ones. Now let's get rid of those. But what's also produced are more neutrons. So more neutrons are released. Those neutrons are then absorbed by more uranium-235 nuclei. Okay, which obviously causes fission again. And so then those will split and release neutrons. And then it happens again. And so we can see down here that more nuclei are absorbing more neutrons. And then they're going to split apart. Now that is nuclear fission. Every time one of those nuclei, or one of the nucleus, splits apart, a lot of energy is released. And that is the energy that you're using in your nuclear reactor. What really happens is it the energy released is heat. The heat is used to heat water, turn it into steam. The steam then goes and turns a turbine, just like happens in any other power station, right? However, why... Um, so why are nuclear power stations considered dangerous if they're not controlled properly? Right, you will have heard of the Chernobyl disaster. Reason being, you can see that one nucleus splitting apart produces at least two neutrons, right? This is a simplified diagram, sometimes it's more. And those neutrons then each split another nucleus, which then splits apart, producing multiple neutrons. And so it's a chain reaction, and it's exponential. So... First, you've got one nuclear splitting, then two, then four. Each one of those is releasing the same amount of energy, 
as each other nucleus. So eventually you have loads and loads and loads of nuclei producing loads and loads and loads of energy and it will and it will spiral out of control really really quickly right and then you, that's when you get an explosion okay so this process must be controlled right so in a nuclear power station this process must be very very carefully controlled okay let me show you a quick diagram of a power station and we can see how that actually happens so here we are and what we have are these uranium fuel rods right the fuel for this nuclear power station is your uranium those will be uranium 235 right those are fissionable isotopes of uranium and what's going to happen is the process of fission as we saw before but what we also have are these control rods okay control rods are extremely important as they control the amount of free neutrons which can be absorbed by other nuclei so if i go back up to the last diagram you see that each one of these nuclei are releasing two neutrons what the control rods do is they cancel out one of those neutrons okay or if you're releasing more neutrons they cancel out as many as you can because you want each nucleus only releasing one neutron right so if you were to actually consider what's happening if this first nucleus only releases one neutron that'll only be absorbed by this nucleus here then that only uh, releases one neutron which will then be absorbed by this nucleus on the right, which means the nucleus on the left is not going to uh, absorb a neutron either. So really you can see that it's a one to one to one, which is a linear relationship and one which will not cause an explosion because your amount of energy releasing, or amount of energy being released, sorry, is constant throughout because it's one nucleus to one nucleus to one nucleus. And that's the point of those control rods, right? So they control the amount of neutrons and ensure that one neutron is released by each fission reaction, if you like. So each fission reaction, or the splitting of a nucleus, only one neutron can go and cause further fission. And that's what those control rods are for. Right? And you won't be tested on the rest of this diagram. You can see here that hot gas goes through here and it steams up. Uh, or it heats up water, sorry, turning it into steam. Steam is going to go and turn some turbines. Cold water down the bottom can go through here. You produce cold gas, and then that is heated up, and the cycle continues. All you're doing is transferring the energy from your nuclear fission to water to produce steam. Steam turns a turbine. Turbine then, is pow then powers a generator, and that produces electricity. Okay. So let's now take a look at nuclear fusion. And now this is a different kind of reaction. The name suggests, you probably have guessed that it's where nuclei are not split apart, where they are forced together. And so let's have a look. So nuclear fusion is the process by which two nuclei are forced together to form a single larger nucleus, right? So if you have two nuclei, it doesn't really matter what they are. If they are forced together, and this is actually quite difficult, it requires a very high amount of energy to cause this process to occur. But then once it happens, even more energy is released, right? And we'll get onto why we can't use nuclear fusion in a, a reactor in a second. But it's forcing those two nuclei together. And once they're close enough, then they will form a single nucleus. Okay, and that is a process which releases energy. So if you think about, and this is a simplified diagram, if down here we had a hydrogen, uh, let's say for example, a hydrogen uh, nucleus, which was H21, that would actually be one proton and one neutron, right? So I should really draw um, two separate, yeah, let's do that in separate colors as well. I'll draw two separate, um, there you go, two separate particles. You've got one proton and one neutron, right? And just actually to make things nicer, if this was a hydrogen one nuclei, okay, one, one, then this is just a proton, okay, there's no neutrons in this one on the left, because if you have a proton number of one and a mass number of one, there are no neutrons. So you can see that in green, I've drawn the protons and in uh, red, I've drawn the neutrons. Now, if these are raised to a high enough temperature, and there's enough energy to cause them to be traveling at a very, very high speed, right? So this is coming in at a very, very, very high speed. 
and this one is also coming in at a very, very, very high speed. Then, boom, you now have a single nucleus, right? So you have a single nucleus that has released, and let's draw that in blue. This is my terrible drawing of an explosion. Boom, right? Energy is released. All right, I can rub that out now. This is now not hydrogen anymore because you've got one proton there and one proton here. You now have two protons. And an element with two protons is not hydrogen, it's helium, right? And you had two protons plus one neutron from this H2 makes that three. So what you've produced is helium by combining two hydrogens together, right? That has produced a load of energy, but in order to make it happen in the first place, you needed to input a load of energy, right? Your energy yield is actually really, really high. The amount of energy released after that process is huge. However, there needs to be a lot of energy to cause that to, uh, to happen in the first place. This process, okay, I'm gonna scroll down so we've got a bit more room. This process is what occurs in stars, okay? So it occurs, in stars. Stars obviously includes our sun. So in the sun, the sun is constantly combining hydrogens together to form helium. Now, it doesn't mean that only hydrogen can react in this way. Other elements can as well. So once you form helium, you could combine two heliums together, right? And if you think what element has a proton number of four, uh, that's gonna be beryllium, okay? So if you have two heliums, both of them have a proton number of two, two of those will give you four protons and that's beryllium, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you can see how new elements are formed by combining these nuclei, just how new elements um, are produced in nuclear fission, where you break down nuclei, so you have less protons in the nucleus after that. But this is actually occurring in our stars, and it really is the origin of all of the chemical elements, right? When this happens, you produce heavier and heavier elements after all your hydrogens run out. So when the hydrogen runs out, you only have heavier elements and then heavier and heavier uh, atoms are formed. And those are your heavier elements, right? For example, your metals, they are only formed uh, from stars when heavier elements are joined together. Okay, now, so why don't we use this? I, I said that this produces a load of energy. It produces more energy than nuclear fission does. Okay, so if we were to a if we were able, sorry, to carry out nuclear fusion in a nuclear reactor, we would perform, uh, we would produce, sorry, not perform, we would produce a mind-boggling amount of energy. Really, it produces loads of energy. However, in order for it to happen, it requires a very very high temperature. Right, it requires high. Okay. I'm going to pretend I did that capital H on purpose, just to give it emphasis. Requires high temperature. Yep. And by high, we really do mean very high, because the temperature of the sun is around about 5,500 degrees Celsius, right? So that is a very, very, very high temperature. It would be extremely expensive and dangerous to maintain, right? So it would be expensive. and dangerous in order to maintain that ridiculously high temperature. Okay, therefore it's just not viable for us to use it in a nuclear reactor. Not at the moment anyway. You know, in the future, who knows? But at the moment, it's definitely not because those uh, conditions are very extreme. Also, the sun is not the hottest star either. You have other stars which are larger, which are gonna be even hotter than that. Um, in a supernova explosion, the the stars get even hotter than that. We're going to have a look at different stars in the next video, actually. Uh, so make sure you do watch that one as well. But we can see why that we can't use nuclear fusion as a source of energy. You know, if you think about it, our main source of energy is the sun. And that is from nuclear fusion. So nuclear fusion really does provide us with energy because obviously the sun's energy is converted into plants, etc., etc., etc. And you know how the food chains go. But for us to use it in a power station is not viable at the moment. Okay, so I hope that made sense. I'm going to stop there. So that was an introduction into nuclear fission and nuclear fusion, and also how we use nuclear fission in a power station. 
If you do have any questions on that, please feel free to post a comment in the box below or send me a direct email using the link and I'll be sure to get back to you. Uh, but as usual, please like and subscribe because it really helps me out and you'll be notified when new videos become available. But thanks for watching.